Hey, it's Matt from Black Coal Woodworking. Welcome here. Today I'm making a very shiny bowl. This bowl is made out of poplar. This poplar has been drying for a couple of years in my backyard. It came down because the tree was dangerous and we just had to get it taken down. I'm using a half inch spindle gouge here to get it to the round. I've found that if I take the wing of the tool and put it sort of closed against the wood and then rotate it open until I get a good shaving, I get a really good cut. I'll show you again from this angle. The wing touches the wood and then I rotate it until I start to get a really good shaving. And there, that is the angle I want. I want that bevel lined up with the cut so it gets really clean and it cuts really easy. You can see the size of shaving I'm getting. I'm actually taking about a half inch of wood out at a time. I find that when you cut this way, it's a lot easier on the tools. I do far less sharpening. It's easier on me as well because the tool and the edge does all the work. And probably the best reason to do this is it's kind of addicting. When you get a shaving like that, that is a ton of fun. I really have to be careful not to turn a whole log into shavings on the floor. This log wasn't the roundest log I've ever started with. Even still, starting with the wing of the tool, touching the wood, and then rotating open until I start to get a good shaving is such a good way to start to get that cut to go really well. Then it almost doesn't matter that the log's got gaps in it until I get this thing back down to round. I'm pretty close now. There's a bit on the top I've got to do. I'm going to try a different cut here where I put the bevel on the wood and use the point of the tool and aim towards the end of the log in the direction I want to cut. That provides an extremely smooth cut. Notice I did not go off the end, but I used the wing of the tool to deal with the very edge of the bowl. To address the bottom of the bowl, I'm still using the half inch spindle gouge, but I'm creating a flat spot. And in that flat spot, I'm making sure that it's recessed toward the center. I want the bowl to only stand on the outside rim. Now that I've established the bottom of my bowl, I'm using a one inch flat scraper just to finish some of that shaping in the overall sides of the bowl. I had left a few lumps there using the spindle gouge that this allows me to clean up a little more easily. Here's the first look of the bowl in the shape I want. I'm gonna put a recess in the bottom of this bowl so I set my calipers to the dimension I want and I only use the left side of the caliper to touch the wood and I put the point or I lined up the point in the mark that it made on the right side but never touching the wood on the right side otherwise I feel like my caliper is going to fold in half and I'd rather not be holding it when it does that. Here I'm switching to a parting tool, just using it to set my recess depth. I usually do about two spaces wide before I switch back to a different gouge. In this case, it'll be the half inch spindle gouge again, just because it's a more efficient tool to remove that material. Again, starting with the wing and the tool fairly closed and then opening it up to the angle where I start to get a really good cut. Then to clean it up, I switch back to that one inch scraper because it just gives me a nice flat surface. And I don't know anyone that could resist not putting a little mark on the bottom. It makes signing easier, it's kind of fun. And I'm also cleaning up my dovetail joint 
for the four jaw chuck. To sand the bowl, I went from 60 grit all the way up to 600. I'm not gonna show you all that because that's just sanding. The sanding process is important though because I found some soft spots in the wood that I could address with some CA glue. This stuff's super handy. I really just squirt it into these little soft spots and then spray it with the activator and it's hard as a rock and then I'll sand it some more just to get it to be completely smooth and in line with the rest of the wood. I found a few more spots that I figured I may as well get while I'm here. It's actually a really good idea to stop, at least I found, after the 60 grit and just see what else is there. Because if you can't get the 60 grit right, then the rest won't matter. You'll have to go back and restart all your sanding again. So it's really good to stop once in a while and just make sure you've got it. Now that the sanding's done, I'm starting to apply shellac. And shellac is a shiny kind of finish. And it's, it's really a friction polish. So the first thing I'm doing though is I'm flooding the surface with this shellac. And I think it's a two pound cut. I want it to soak into the wood a little bit more. And so I'm making sure that there's lots going onto the surface. Just putting this stuff on doesn't guarantee a shiny finish. What really helps is getting that friction and that heat built up. So gotta turn on the lathe, gotta turn up the speed, and I'm using a paper towel and just pushing, pushing slow, and then you get this, and it's glassy. If you could feel that, it's almost like touching glass. Really what we've done is French polish. On top of that, I'm actually adding a layer of beeswax. Now, you might wonder if it's gonna take away from the shine, and it doesn't really, but it does add just a tiny bit more protection. And again, you gotta use friction and heat here to get that wax to melt into the wood. And you can watch that line go up the piece as I get that kind of heat and friction. It's just a really easy way to tell that you got it. And there you go, it's really shiny. My goal now is to not mess up that surface. To do the inside of the bowl, I'm using a half inch bowl gouge. So I'll speed the footage up here because in hollowing out a bowl can take a bit of time. So we'll shorten that up a little. What I'm really trying to do here is push into the bowl pretty straight. That way I get all the flat grain. The second you have to cut end grain, that's a whole different game. It's just harder to cut. And I could tell when I cut the side like this, I actually forgot to uh, face the bowl first. So the edge of the bowl wasn't very round or wasn't straight. It, it was literally a log that I'd cut with a chainsaw, so I had to get rid of that. Once I did that, I could go back to pushing on the side grain and it just cuts so much faster and smoother. If you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves sometimes here, it's still well below freezing and it's pretty cold in the shop. If you're enjoying the video, please consider giving a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if I've earned it, and uh, shoot me a comment, I'd love to hear from you.
So I'm aiming for a wall thickness of about a quarter inch on this bowl. I'll probably leave the bottom a little bit thicker than that just so it's got a little more sturdiness. And I've got a recess that's going in there so the quarter inch on the bottom it'll probably be that when you look at the actual recess depth but not the outside depth where the jaws are expanding into. I still have about an inch to go on the bottom. I found that my wall thickness wasn't quite even, so I did a light pass with the bowl gouge just to try and trim that up and make it consistent all the way from top to bottom. Finishing the bottom of a bowl is so much easier with a scraper. This is a round nose scraper. Make it really sharp, use the burr, set your tool rest above center, let that scraper aim down and you won't get a catch. For the inside, I'm using the same finish as the outside, just really flooding that surface with shellac. Then using that same friction and heat build up to get it to take to the wood and cure. I wanted it a little shinier on the inside, so I kept adding some more shellac. And again, that's more like a French polish. And the more layers you add, the shinier it'll get. I'm adding the beeswax to finish it off again, just because I like that type of finish. It makes it feel just that extra buttery smooth. It never really made sense to me to call wood buttery, but after you put beeswax on it, I would agree. It's something you gotta try. And the finished bowl, look at that, it's a thing of beauty. Thank you for watching, I really enjoyed making this bowl. Highly suggest you guys give it a shot if you can. Catch you guys next time.